Good morning, folks. We've got a lighter space weather day, but we're heavy just about everywhere else. Storms, science news, and the interstellar object story we didn't mention yesterday. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and get a peek at those calibration jostles acting as the primary thing to be seen on our star. That makes for a very calm and quiet day indeed. Solar flaring remains absent, the solar wind at Earth is calming, and in 211 angstroms we see the end of the southern coronal hole lined up with the northern polar extension. We do have a brief uptick in earthquakes possible in the interim between these coronal streams. Let's go to lightning over the United States last night, system in focus in the southeast and another in the upper Midwest region we highlighted yesterday. The southeast began midday as the storm line tore southward with more in its wake. You can see how the lightning came in arcs with even larger flashes occurring behind them. And then there were the tornadoes and large hail forecast coming through in the north. That line didn't kick in until sunset and then moved eastward along the U.S.-Canada border. Interesting to note that we did have gorgeous shots of a water spout in Greece as well. This one sent tourists running. Interesting story out about the June 2015 solar storms and a cosmic ray event that occurred during the latter portions of it. But it wasn't the sort of cosmic ray event most of you were thinking. The sequence of solar energetic protons during the June 2015 solar storms included the surge in atomic nuclei registered as cosmic rays over on the right side of this combined day's chart. And while the scientists adequately state that the geomagnetic storms were not the cause of the cosmic ray surge, they did not investigate the proton surges from the solar flares themselves, which bypass Earth's magnetic field and the IMF. The initial burst and stream limit was hit due to the western limb eruption on the 18th. That CME did not hit Earth, so the latter eruptions drove the following surges, including the big one on the 22nd, the focus of the paper. The closest they come in recognizing is that the event occurred as we crossed the heliospheric current sheet, which is where our interplanetary field surges the most. Solar cycle forecasts, always a key item for the grand solar minimum welcome party round here. This group comes down where this observer does most often. A slightly weaker cycle expected, down around 15% from this one, revving up in the 2020s. A few extreme events are expected to sneak in here and there, but all in all, this would be the, quote, at least one more cycle before grand minimum, end quote, that we have insisted this community remember and use to temper their excitement in the near term. So folks, it was clear in yesterday's comments that many of you are either unaware or really wanted us to mention again the controversy in conspiracy surrounding the interstellar object. So this cigar shape, never actually photographed or anything like that, it is 100% derived from rapid changes in the brightness profile which to them must be reflection changes due to an elongated object tumbling chaotically. For what it's worth, there is not one piece of evidence other than time and incredulity to suggest that this wouldn't be an interstellar probe from somewhere else, kind of like the lights you see flashing on an airplane at night overhead. Maybe someone else. There is literally not one ounce of evidence more for either way. All we have is the brightness changes. Not saying that's the answer, I'm saying it's possible, and 100% of the cigar shaped stories are based on that one piece of evidence that does go both ways. So why not follow that up with a story detailing that seasonal weather changes are likely present on many exoplanets deemed to be potentially Earth-like. Exo-Earths, if you will. Their tilts are often stable and large enough to produce such variability. Hundreds of such places already found just in our own galaxy. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.